particular in the questions and comments. Now that said, I am pleased to welcome our guest this evening. Cami Garcia is a co-founder of Y'all Fest, the biggest teen book festival in the country, and is the co-author behind the best-selling Beautiful Creature series. And more recently, however, she has become a smash hit author at DC Comics with Teen Titans Raven and her adult Joker and Harley series. Uh, she is joined by fan favorite comic artist and illustrator, Gabriel Piccolo, who is currently based out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He is a world renowned artist popularized with his uh, casual Teen Titans series and his ongoing webcomic Icarus and the Sun. He has since gone on to develop other projects for studios such as Blizzard, Boom, HarperCollins, and of course, DC. Uh, additionally, Cami and Gabriel are joined this evening by fellow YA author and DC creator, Danielle Page, Hi. who is the author of Mara Tidebreaker, the hit Dorothy Must Die series, and is also one of the co-authors for the upcoming novel, The Ravens which honestly I have to say is an amazing book and I would encourage everyone to keep an eye out for it when it hits the shelves. Or you can click the link that we'll be dropping in the chat section below to pre-order The Ravens, as well as purchase your very own copy of Beast Boy. <laughs> and with that purchase, you'll also be getting a lot of swag and some book plates. So we have the book plate and very cool sneaker keychains. I want one of those. <laughs> and the poster. So very, very awesome collection with the purchase of Beast Boy today. And without further ado, I will turn the event over to our guests. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you guys. Um, I feel like I was there at the very beginning of Teen Titans. So this is so cool. First, I just want to ask how the heck are you considering everything that's going on in the world? I mean, I'm okay. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm kind of solitary anyways. I worry about, you know, what's going on in the world. But other than that, um, you know, I'm just trying to go online and cheer people on so that people who are lonely, you know, feel less alone. Gabriel, how is it in Brazil? Uh, we're having a heat wave right now. So it was supposed to be chilly because it's like winter here, but it's, it's, hot as always and uh i'm pretty busy uh drawing but other than that that's that's pretty much the same okay well i want to ask you guys about beast boy i think he looks a little bit like gabriel i mean <laughs> when how was your conception of him what did you when you were thinking about who he was going to be cammy did you think he was a baby gabriel what did you think i mean once i met gabriel definitely <laughs> Um, because I imagine, I mean, Gabriel without the mustache and uh, a younger <laughs> Gabriel at 17, um, because, you know, Gabriel actually has a really, you know, friendly, gregarious personality. And I, I, that's why I see Beast Boys, like the kind of person that wants to make everyone happy and make, you know, people have a good time. Um, and then of course the hair, <laughs> very similar haircut to Gabriel, um, but, you know, we just, we wanted Gar to just be really, you know, really relatable and, you know, look like a fun, you know, kind of guy you'd see at school. I think he's just so adorable. Um, Gabriel, when you started drawing him, did you think you were looking at a baby you? How did you conceive him? Uh, well, I was always um, basing my designs on the, the Teen Titans cartoon from, from the 2000s. That's my mo the biggest inspiration. But I think it's pretty much what Kemi said too, that we wanted to make him this sort of relatable guy, not trying too hard. Like he's, he's not average, he's, he's kind of cool. Like he has the, the green streaks on his hair, but he's not trying that hard to be the coolest, you know, that sort of stuff went into that character. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about how you guys met? Because I don't know if everybody knows how Kemi found you. Um, I always think that's so, it's just such a special story. I don't know if I found, I, I discovered him for myself. I think you everyone- You found him for, yeah, and helped make this connection that gave us this- Well, it's cool because I am only working for DC because of Danielle doing an intro. And then I wanted- so Actually, I'm responsible. That's what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> it's like a- The first, the first, uh, the first domino, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, 
So I, the one thing I knew that I wanted was I wanted them to wear regular, the kids to wear regular clothes because um, DC wanted me to put the emphasis on, you know, them being teenagers, not su just superheroes. So I knew I wanted them to look, you know, quote unquote normal, not to wear superhero costumes. And I was like scouring the internet and I found all these images on first on Pinterest and then later on Instagram of the Teen Titans in normal clothes, that, which turned out to be Gabriel's casual Teen Titans series. And ev the more, like once I figured out his name, then I searched them. And I was like, this is exactly what I want. And so I showed it to DC and they actually already were aware of Gabriel, I think as an artist, but I don't know that they had, were thinking about Teen Titans at the moment, but they were like, oh no, we've totally seen his stuff, he's great. And they said they would reach out to him and then Gabriel can tell you what happened when they try to get in touch with him. <laughs> yeah, because that was the year, that was 2017. So the casual Teen Titans went viral online. So it was, this huge, this huge thing, and by the end of that year, I received the first email uh, from DC contact me to to do this series. But I thought it was a prank because <laughs> it was a little bit, it was a little bit too good to be true. They even have like the the DC logo at the the end at the bottom of the email, and I was like, ah, that's so fake. Like someone trying to be <laughs> someone at DC, like would totally fake that. And then it took a while. It took uh, some tries. Uh, for me to reply to them because I legit thought it was it was some sort of scam. Cammy, didn't you have to actually reach out to him? No, I wasn't allowed to. So I knew I was like, <laughs> I bet you know. I mean, I always you know Gabriel's much younger than me, but I was like, you know, he, you know, he's in his twenties. Like he thinks it's a joke. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so then they. They said, Cammy, do not reach out to him. We don't want him to know what the project is yet. We don't want him to know who the writer is. And they follow me on, on Twitter. <laughs> Gabriel didn't. So I couldn't be like, hey, Gabriel, follow me so I can message you. And I just kept praying. And then they said they had some other people fell from different emails from DC. And then finally he replied. But like yeah. every did he write back? And they're like, no, not yet. Because <laughs> uh, well, I'm so glad that, that he finally to. said yes. <laughs> The thing that I replied to was uh, something completely different. It was sort of a commission, a, a test commission from DC. My, my very first thing paid that I did paid. Uh, and uh, th that, was, that was why I answered because it sounded more reasonable if that makes sense. <laughs> Well I, I, well, I think it, you guys just made magic together on Ravens. What was the process? Was it different doing the second one? Do you feel more at ease? Was it, was it like, yeah. what was your working process? It was much easier because I had never done a graphic novel either. So Gabriel had done a web one, but not, you know, not a, you know, one that was going to be printed. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into it because of printing. So And the size, the size also, because my, my, my comic has like, 70 pages something this we're talking about a comic that has more than 100 pages so it's a right. lot of work almost 200 i mean it's like one almost 200 exactly one i think with the with the preview i think it's like 180 something so it's a lot of um you know it's a lot of pages and it was just easier because we knew how the process worked and we also knew things that like we had wanted to experiment and try with raven but we were just like the schedule was so tight and, you know, we didn't want to add anything that could make us late, basically. So well, this time we got to like play around more because, you know, like we felt like we were on top of the timing. Do you it have was a favorite? Much more, like, much more was, straightforward. Uh, Gabriel, what was, what was your favorite? Do you have a favorite part of this comic? Like what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite scene? What was your uh, favorite I think, drop? I think, I think by the second half of the comic, because uh, the powers are showing up slowly and he starts to connect with animals, uh, with ran random animals here and there. And that's, that's really fun to draw. Uh, and of course, I love the ending. It's uh, like Raven. The ending on Raven was my favorite part to draw because it's so exciting. Uh, Beast Boy was the same because there's a transformation and there's so much stuff going on and stakes are high. And it's the, the always the best part to draw. What about you, Cammy? What's your favorite part of Beast Boy that you can tell us? Um, I liked the I liked the beginning when he kind of starts doing some pranks and getting attention. But one of my favorite parts besides the end is there's I call it the snake scene, and they showed one of the pages as a preview. 
um, Gabriel, I had seen a drawing that he did that had a snake in it before, you know, like for his own stuff. And so I was like, oh my God, I know he can draw a snake really well. <laughs> so I instructed, like, I literally was like, how can I create a whole scene where there's a reason for there to be a snake? So it was really fun because I came up with it. And then it's a really huge one, right? It's an I love it. I think it's so gorgeous. <laughs> and it's awesome too because Gabriel doesn't get the whole script, he gets it in pieces. So I very often, like, I try to put things in that I know will surprise him and get him excited. Like, there's one page where Beast Boy's getting ready for school, and I had him open the closet, and there's this whole sneaker collection. Because <laughs> That's a him. gift to Gabriel. <laughs> that, that, was very, that was very fun to draw. And when he gets to them, it's really fun, because he, like, writes me, and he's like, oh, my gosh, I got to page 28. <laughs> and when it comes to, like, designing the clothes, um, Cammie, do you have any input? Do you send references? I know Gabriel's such a, um, a, a fashion sure, horse. But it's more like Gabriel sends me references <laughs> and your favorites. I love that. Um, yeah, like, do you feel this for this character? Like, do, do you think this, this uh, uh, clothing combo would work on this character and then we play around with that? Can you talk a little bit about how much, like, how much do you guys communicate in terms of process? Like, I a know Cammy sends you the pages, but do you guys talk all the time? Like, when Every I, day, basically, Sarah, I, I my would artist say. and I were long distance, we did not talk, we did not meet until the day that the book came out. So, uh, mm -hmm. until we saw our art. So, you guys had a much closer relationship. What is it like? Well, it's really fun because we message on WhatsApp and stuff, but before Raven came out, Gabriel was coming to the U.S., and so we started the tour here and he stayed at my house with me and my family, my kids, my husband. And it was really fun because, you know, not only did we get to know each other better and obviously going on tour, but like, it was also really fun to watch him work because usually he'd be like, hold on, I'll send you something. And he was <laughs> like a, like an image, like a, you know, a, like a, a JPEG. And then all of a sudden I could just like sit, you know, next to him and like peek on his shoulder while he's like drawing the pages. <laughs> I yeah, I think that. I think I think that was that was really the game changer when Kemi understood how my process worked, like how I how long did I take to, to create the pages, what pages took me more more time to draw. That was I, I think that time when I that, that time that I spent at her house drawing and she saw me working was really, really game changer. I think that's so great. Do you ever, Gabriel, do you ever give Cami suggestions story wise or dialogue wise? How does it work for you? Uh, it's like, can you, uh, uh, she, she suggests like, um, uh, I'm going to, to make like a, a woods, a scene that in, it's in the woods. What kind of woods do you like to draw? And then we discuss that type I of stuff. That. Or like, he's going to turn into some monkey, any monkey. What monkey would you like to draw? <laughs> and, then, and then we go back and forth on that sort of stuff. But we also talk about things like it was really hard to figure out how to show what was going on in Gar before the full tr outer transformation. Right. Like, you know, I'll, I'll message Gabriel and, or we'll get on the phone and I'll just say like, you know, how do we show this? And he's like, what if the eyes turn green? What, you know, like, and he kind of gives me ideas. Um, or I'll say like, you know, what would you as like, you know, the biggest Beast Boy fan want to see? And he's like, I, you know, I really want to see him, you know, like doing some, you know, some cool, funny things. And so, you know, he said like, you know, having a crush on a girl. So he'll give me like ideas for scenes or like things he feels are really important to include. And then basically I just make it happen. But I definitely also try to consult him for the detail, you know, like, would you yeah, rather- the inside I think, I, I, or not? I think it's all about the, the visual, visual. Uh, it's visual, visual. I never, I never know. Visual. What's the pronunciation? Visual. It's always about the visual uh, cues that sometimes I can add to the to the script. So whenever I feel like I have like a suggestion, I make it, and then Kemi makes it happen. Well, I love your partnership, and I think you come up with something so fun and special, and you can just you can see it on the page. So. Um, I wanted to ask about a little bit more about Beast Boy himself. Like, this is an origin story. Cami, how did you d dive in? Like, what were you thinking based on the comic, based on um, I, the TV okay. show? Where did you start? I'm a big fan also of the animated series, which is Gabriel's biggest influence. Um, and so I kind of 
think of that as like my, um, I mean, I did read all the comics, but there are different iterations of him. So I kind of stuck with that because I also knew that was the Gar that Gabriel liked the most. And, you know, and then we talked a lot. So he was like, you know, I, especially because we went on tour. So when we were on tour, we were starting going to start Beast Boys. So we did a lot of talking while we were like, you know, in airports and stuff about like, you know, well, what, you know, what would you think he'd be worried about? And Gabriel would say things like, you know, um, you know, like I, you know, I want to make him cool, but not like, you know, the coolest kid yet. So also the way Gabriel would physically describe him did impact personality but the biggest thing for me was like he's a relatable character and I you know I like the fact that he's nice he's not like super buff and perfect I, and I, I love that <laughs> yeah that's what people can relate to so I wanted him to be the kind of kid that like other boys you know that age could relate to and did you change anything from the from the original iteration like what did what changes did you make in the character um, well, he's not green all the time. Right. Uh, he, he turns green eventually with the transformation. Um, and we also, Gabriel was, was like, we could put some green in his hair. I you love know? the hair. <laughs> so, um, we did that. And then, um, also he doesn't know about his powers in the original. He knows about his powers, like when he's a kid, but in this one, the powers emerge are emerging now. So he's just finding out, realizing he has powers. So you have a, a big story where as a kid and stuff, he's just thought he was like a normal guy. Right. Well, I love him. I think he's, a, I mean, again, just the cutest thing. Um, so what you've had such a huge response from the fans um, of, of Teen Titans and you've gotten cosplayers. I've seen everything all over the internet. Um, when you're writing this, are you now thinking about them? Does it change the way you write or the way you draw? Having like had such a great response and had so much contact with everyone on tour. Right. It does just because again, like, I, I mean, and it's so nice to have Gabriel because he is such a big fan. Cause I just always try to think of like, when I'm writing, like, what would I not want as a fan? Like, you know, and someone, will, you know, someone will be like, Oh, maybe you should, he shouldn't, you know, turn into an animal. I'm like, no, he's going to turn into an animal. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kind of like, I try to think of like, what would the fans be really disappointed, you know, if we took away from him? Well, what I liked about it is how fun and funny it is. And like the hot dog, the, like the eating contest. It's like, it's you, you made it just, it felt so very teen. Like, I love that. I um, good at that stuff too, because he captures expressions and body language so well when he draws. You do. I think it's just, I, I was just jealous of the pages and the colors are, did you guys pick out the color scheme? I know it's David Calderon, like how um, he did the color on Mira too. And I know he did Raven. I mean, it's just so beautiful. Um, did you guys pick the green? Yeah, we picked Yeah, the yeah, green, green and teal palette. Mm -hmm. I love it. And can you talk a little bit about, because we're running out of time, about Beast Boy Loves Raven. Can you give us any, like, why do, why, why do they belong together? We've seen both of their stories. Did you plan any Easter eggs in this book? Well, like, did you why you think they belong together? And then I'll tell them a little more about the story. Like, uh, I've, 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 been, I've been shipping these characters ever since I first watched them on TV, because there was all this very very small scene very quick scenes of them together no, like not implying anything but with we defense of course implied that they were going to to be together eventually right. um one thing that i love is the ship dynamic like how different they are like raven's the story up one and guard is pretty excited about everything and the way the way the, each of them reacts to to have superpowers on now that i that i've done a raven book and beast boy book they're they're just so different and it's gonna be fun to, to see those characters interact and is there anything you can tell us about bringing them together like what any i know there's a couple of pages of a preview in the back yeah uh, so what can we say <laughs> so the one thing it shows in the very beginning is um if you read either book um they both get a letter and the letter is what drives them to go to nashville which is where they meet Nashville, Tennessee. And, and why did you guys pick Nashville? Um, I, I'm, well, DC really liked the idea of Southern towns or specific places that hadn't been seen as much in the DC universe. And basically I just tried to pick places that I thought would be fun for Gabriel to draw that had well, like- I love New Orleans in the first one, just so cool. 
well, that seemed very Raven, but for Nashville, like I wanted a place, Gabriel knocked it out of the park with Raven and all this, like, you know, the buildings and stuff. So I wanted it's a place so gorgeous. that looked Thank different. <laughs> Nashville's kind of has all that cool architecture, but it's very different looking than New Orleans too. Yeah, I love I love drawing cities that have this uh, very this personality, like this very specific aesthetic. Uh, well, I think that I we're all super excited for it. Um, let's see, what else can I ask you guys? Um, so, what do you, can you give us any hints about? What are you doing another one after this? Is it just the third one, and then you're done, or is there a fourth one? Is there anything else you can tell us, or am I asking too much? We plan to keep going. We can't tell you what we're going to do next. Um, Cause you DC know. would kill us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask. I also work for DC. I don't want them to kill us. So <laughs> Danielle. Yes. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you guys want to tell us about, about Beast Boy? Um, well, you definitely get a preview. If you, um, if you get the book in the back, there's a preview of Beast Boy as Raven. And then if you get the book from a store, I just, these just came to the day in the mail. Look how big this oh is. Oh my God, so gorgeous. Oh my God. So this is a poster that you get from um, Politics and Prose. And then they made little um, also book plates. Right. And I, I'm actually, uh, I'm giving away a copy. Um, of, of your book on my Instagram and a copy of Mira. So you guys should go over and, and, and. Mira's great. Like a lot, most, I've noticed that a lot of fans of the team, like our Teen Titans also like either have read Mira and loved it or they go and read it and also love it. Oh, so. Thank you. Um, but another question for you guys. So um, what, aside from Beast Boy and Raven, do you have, what is your next favorite character in Teen Titans? Um, I mean, we both, I love Starfire. I do too. I think it would be Star, yeah, definitely. But we also, Gabriel and I also like Young Justice and other characters that we feel like could be in the Teen Titans. <laughs> yeah. I also like Young Justice, that's very cool. And when you're, if you're not um, doing Teen Titans, is there another DC property that you are dying to write? You've already done Joker and Harley, which is so cool. Um, Gabriel, what, what, is there anybody else that you're dying to write in DC? Uh, I would say, uh, like, like Annie said, uh, I would love to do anyone from, from Young Justice because the dynamic is very, very similar to the Teen Titans. It's all about, it's all about the sidekicks. The, the characters yeah. are still learning how to do this stuff. I, I love to work on this kind of character. And what was, were the Teen Titans your very first love in the DC universe? Like, what was oh, the sorry? first? Which character and of the, all the DC characters, what's the first character that you saw and loved? Was it Teen Titans or something else? It was because they were my very first connection to uh, Western comics in general, to superheroes as a whole, because we don't have the comic books, uh, comic book shops in, here in Brazil. So it's very different the way that we get the graphic novels, the, the trades. Uh, it takes a while for them to get translated. So uh, the... The cartoon was my connection to these characters. I love it. Cammy. what about yeah. you? What was your first DC love? Wonder Woman, for sure. Me I was too. Wonder I was Wonder Woman and then actually, and Superman for me, I and Lewis Lane and a little Batman. <laughs> I love Batman, but it, I, like the one I first discovered was definitely Wonder Woman. Um, I was Wonder Woman for lots of Halloweens. And, um, uh, you know, and I love her. I am working on some other stuff at DC, but I can't- I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking, but- I'll get in trouble, so I can't say. The one thing I will say I'm really proud of, though, is there, Lori Hulse Anderson has a um, DC anthology called um, Wonder Women of History that's coming out. And I have a story in it with an artist named Excel, and um, it is about uh, Emma Gonzalez, the activist. And I'm really proud of that and really excited to be in that. Um, I'm in it too, I'm, I'm excited too. I'm doing Serena Williams uh, with, Brittany, with, with Brittany Williams. So, <laughs> which I never actually thought about them both having a last name. Uh, what about you, Gabriel? Do you have any other DC stuff that you can tell us about or is that all top secret? Uh, no, I think that's, that's all I'm working at right now because uh... It's a, just doing, doing just one book is a lot of work. So I okay. just want to finish this one before moving to the next okay. one. Well, I'm, we are so, I think we're at 7.30. So I think people have questions, but I am so excited for, for the next one. <laughs> You'll get to read it first. I know. Yeah, yeah. exclusivity. <laughs> 
Um, I think we have questions or are we waiting longer? I thought they said 7.30. I think Cherokee's coming back to do the questions. Yeah, I, d I can try to do it, but because there's Q&A, but I think Cherokee's gonna come back. Should I start to, oh, there she is. Hi, Cherokee. <laughs> You're muted, sweetie. There she is. Yeah, I can see you though. You're adorable. <laughs> All righty. Um, yeah, so we do have a few questions. Um, let's see. Let me try and find them. Let's see. Let's try and start with some, some of the easier ones and like work our way into some of the more complex, you know, heavy hitters. Um, one that we have from Margaret is, uh, if you had a superpower, what would it be and why? <laughs> Gabriel, what would your superpower be? Oh, 100% sure it will be something about uh, shape-shifting. Like, it doesn't have to be shape-shifting into animals, but I love this idea of changing your, your form to whatever you have to at the moment. Danielle, what would yours be? I think I'm muted. Sorry but I can't figure out what you would say. I don't know. You're, you're muted, Danielle. No. Danielle, you hit mute. Oh. Can we try and... Oh, am I still oh. muted? Oh, there she is. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, I think mine is, I always feel like I, I want to do everything at the same time. So I'd like the power to be able to go do other things while I'm doing one thing. So multitasking. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> I would probably have some kind of telekinesis where I could move stuff. I definitely wouldn't want to fly. No. I'm scared of heights. I, it the would most, not go well for me. The most overpowered characters are always characters that have telekinesis. So that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. I like it. Raven, too. I like, that's why I love Raven, because she can do all kinds of cool stuff. And she's the strongest titan. <laughs> yes, honestly. But, okay. Yes. Um, all right. So... Um, we have one for Danielle. It, oh. it says, um, for Danielle, what did you enjoy most while working on Mara and can we expect more? I loved um, making her a badass. Like it was just fun to write. Like I, originally when I first had the idea, I thought I was going to do it from the guy's perspective and it was going to be like him falling in love with her and and having to decide, decide between the water and the land. But when we flipped it and it was her story, it was like Mira, like Mira having to choose between killing him and falling in love with him. And I just thought it was, it was a much more powerful story. And it was, she's like more than a princess. She's like this warrior and I, I loved writing her. And um, at the moment we cannot expect more, but I do have another DC project that I'm super excited about that I hope we get to announce soon. All right, that's very exciting. And Mara is an amazing, like you did a great job developing her character for this. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, on to another question. This one is a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, from Mark, he asks, uh, there have been so many versions and incarnations of Teen Titans over the years. Um, can you please describe the challenges involved in creating a version of Teen Titans that's fresh and original, uh, yet still is kind of like a recognizable Teen Titans series. I mean, I think the biggest thing was the fact that we weren't going to have him green and we were going to have his powers kind of a secret because by doing that, that changes enough that, you know, it, it does make him not seem, um, you know, not seem like someone we've seen before. And then the biggest, you know, the biggest thing we did was just really think about um, what we love about him as a character and not try not to take, you know, those elements away. Um, another question from Brittany asks, um, this series has been bringing forth uh, true teenage issues and stigmas. Uh, what was the deciding factor on Beast Boy's background and personality? We picked. Um, you know, uh, he's, he's, la he's Latino in this. Um, we wanted a more, you know, diverse cast of characters. Um, we, he has some body image issues. He is very self-conscious because he looks much younger than he is. So Gabriel and I just talked about like, what did we think, you know, his kind of, you know, what were the things he would be insecure about? You know, what would be the, you know, the things if he were just like a regular kid going to school that he would kind of face. 
And then we, you know, picked the ones that we liked the best and felt the most natural for the character. Yep. And that's, that's very true. Um, reading both Beast Boy and Raven, I must say you guys have captured, like, you created some really relatable characters, um, both in the art, the fashion, and just what kids and honestly adults go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, congrats on that. You guys did a great job. Um, let's see, what's another good question? Um, we also have, for Gabriel, um, sure. answered this a little bit earlier, but saying that you would also want to do a Young Justice series, which I think would be great. <laughs> um, but uh, Margaret also comes back and asks, if you could draw any other series um, or superhero, which would it be? And I'm guessing that involves not just DC, but just like across the board fandom. <laughs> Um, it will be the, the, the first big, like the Teen Titans and then the cast of Teen Titans. Uh, after that, the uh, Young Justice. And if we're talking Marvel, I think it will be Spider-Man, but Miles, Miles Morales. Be, yeah. That would be amazing. Um, and I guess we can kind of expand on that. If you guys had to write for any other character or any other like fandom, I know Cammy, you've also done the X-Files, which was awesome. It's one of my favorite TV shows ever. Um, but if you had to write for another series, um, which one would it be? Um, Non-DC would be Buffy for sure. Oh Buffy, my God, I love that. Like they've That's missed, cool. the, they missed the boat on like capitalizing on my true like fan love. <laughs> I'm also a huge Supernatural fan. Oh, um, those are probably the two shows, like the fandoms that I and that are, are kind of like the ones that I've been a part of the longest besides like my Wonder Woman and DC love. All right. And how about you, Danielle? Oh God, I'd have to say Star Wars. I mean, I really want to do that. Um, and I love Riverdale and I'm getting to do an Archie comic. So I'm excited about that. Um, and uh, God, and Buffy is a forever fave. And Supernatural, I would agree with you. I, I've been watching, I think I've seen every episode too. Oh my gosh, these are all great. I'm like, I'd be excited to read or read any of these, honestly, especially the Supernatural. I feel like you guys would do great in that, in that fandom. Um, let's see, there's another one for Cammy, and I guess, Danielle, you can also jump in on this. Um, uh, what's the difference do you find writing for prose versus writing for comics? Like, do you find it easier? Do you find it harder? Um, I, I find it easier because um, I write very lean. I don't write a lot of fluff and I love writing dialogue. So, you know, writing graphic novel is really that, you know, describing, you know, the actions that are going on and then the dialogue and then Gabriel takes care of transitions and, you know, facial expressions and all the other nuances. Um, so for me, it was, super, it was very natural and I really like doing it. Um, I was a soap writer. So for me, dialogue first, always. <laughs> all right. Um, so we did have, let's see, what's, we have another one, and you guys can all jump in here. Um, what's it like working slash writing for DC? Um, is it like, a, is it fun? Do they keep you on your toes? Um, fun. does like some clout come with working for DC? Like, can you give us any kind of, in my own mind, for sure, because I'm a DC, <laughs> so I feel super cool. Um, same, big same. <laughs> yeah, they're so nice, though. Like, they, you know, our editors, like, they give us so much, like, freedom and, like, you know, room to experiment and do things. They're just very easy and fun to work with. And I think it's just, like, kind of that dream that you didn't think you had. Like, it just seems like something that was so far away from me that I was just this big surprise that I, I just I feel super happy and privileged to be a part of the DC world. Yes. All right. The, the, the deadlines are intense, but the team is awesome. I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or for him, because, you know, he has a lot more work than me. The yeah, writing... I, I, I agree with than the drawing. It's a marathon, but it's worth it. All right, and um, a little bit before our event, Daniel actually tweeted out um, if they, anybody had any questions online um, to see if, you know, they'd ask any questions. And one person came back and her name is Michelle and she says, yes, 
do you know how much I adore you all? <laughs> <laughs> we know who that is. So, <laughs> so just a, a fun little shout out to you guys. We um, adore you too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love her. <laughs> she is and we get to do all this fun stuff. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, and I guess the last question to kind of help, well, uh, shouldn't say help, but to start, you know, wrapping things up is one thing we like to ask everybody is, what are you reading currently? Um, are there any projects or books that you guys are excited for um, or want to shout out? So I am reading um, this book by Adam Sass. It's called Surrender Your Sons. And it comes out uh, in a week. And it's really, really good. And then I also am reading this book that I found out um, just hit the New York Times list called Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. So Yes, that has been finished and this is the one I'm reading now. Yeah, Cemetery Boys has been passed around from all of our booksellers at the store, so it's definitely getting some buzz. Um, how about you, Danielle? Um, I just picked up Alyssa Cole's uh, No One Is Watching. It's a grown-up book. It's like a rear window. Um, I'm excited about that one. Um, and I have Catherine McGee's uh, sequel to her, Amer her American Royals book, and I cannot remember the name of it because I forgot just now. <laughs> I am also forgetting that I know. I just, I have it. It's like right downstairs, but I did not. <laughs> yes, but yeah, that I'm excited for that one too. Um, how about you, Gabriel? I am reading a friend's book, uh, Alice Arden's uh, The Cascat Girls. She gave me the book when I visited her at um, New Orleans. And I um, I have a little bit of free time now, so I'm I'm reading it. Because cause I, I wasn't reading anything. I was I was just so so focused focus on the deadlines that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't take any content. And now I have the free time I'm reading something new. Elise is brilliant. She's doing a Zatanna book. I love her so much. <laughs> yeah, with Jacqueline de Leon, so. Really, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. I love Zatanna anyway. So this just gives me something more <laughs> to look forward to. All of these great suggestions, wow. Um, so yeah, we are getting a little bit closer to the end, so. I'm just going to jump ahead. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. Thank uh, our guests for their time, for answering all these. Uh, if you haven't already, please be sure, you know, click the link below, uh, pre-order your copy of The Ravens. I can't stress to you how cool it is <laughs> as a novel. Oh, thank you. So um, be sure to get your copy of Beast Boy and Raven and get some of this really awesome swag. I can't tell you how excited I am to, to just, like, put that on everything. Um, so that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you all so much for your great contributions. Uh, many thanks to Cami, Gabriel, and Danielle for joining us for this event and sharing their work with us. And of course, thank you so much to the viewers for tuning in today. Don't forget, you can still click the link in the chat box for your copies. To find out more for our events, uh, just like this one, be sure to check out our website for update um, listings. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Kids and Pros. Also, you can watch our past events posted to our Politics and Pros YouTube page. And that's all. Keep reading and stay safe, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.